Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kings TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Uh, subscribe to the Chiz channel if you're not already subscribed. And hit that post notification anytime I bring you this action, this heat. Guess what? You're amongst the first to receive it. Now, with no further ado, let's get into uh, this evening's video, if you will. You know, I was on a, a call earlier. I received a call um, from a guy that's locked up. He's actually doing a life sentence, plus 20. Now, um, he's been locked up for the last maybe 22 years, I believe. And um, he believes that he'll eventually see the streets again. He had to do 20 years and he seen the parole board and um, they told him to come back in 10 years. So he's still holding on to hope that eventually he may get out. Um, at this point, I want to say he's roughly 45 years old and it's been locked up. You know, 22, 23 years serving that life sentence. Um, so, you know, we're we're doing some things that we're going to bring you all some real live uh, prison stories. In addition to the stories that I bring you. And also he served several years with Fleece Johnson, you know, at Eddyville State Penitentiary uh, in Kentucky. So he has a plethora of Fleece Johnson stories. And um, I'll be bringing you all those stories. But, you know, we were talking and, um, you know, it, it's just one of those situations to where it's unfortunate. And, you know, he was telling me that he likes what I'm doing. You know, keep continuing to, to talk to the youth, um, to talk to the younger people, you know, just even if they're not listening, continue to do so. Because if I can make a difference in one person's life, hey, that's one person that didn't end up in the grave or in the penitentiary. You see what I'm saying? So, he, you know, he was telling me all the different things uh, pertaining to that. And it was a gentleman that walked past. And he was like, man, you know, Ken's, don't you? Real Ken's. And dude was like, yeah, yeah, that's my dude. So he jumped on the phone. I talked to him for a couple minutes. And I was telling him, you know, what I was doing and what have you. And so he actually wanted me to share his story. He wanted me to share his story. And, you know, I thought about it. And I know that it would be a good story for people to hear. So I said, why not? Why not share the story? You know, it's uh, Monday evening, right around 9.51 uh, p.m., I was about to go in the house and eat me some of this good old spaghetti. But I said, you know what? Let me hop on YouTube and speak and engage with my favorite people in the world. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to share this story um, of this individual who, again, asked me to share the story. You know, the old saying cocaine is a hell of a drug. You know, a lot of people got that from the uh, Dave Chappelle show uh, when he did the um, he was doing a, a skit, actually a Rick James skit. And um, so if you all haven't seen that, check out Dave Chappelle, Rick James skit. Most people have seen it, but, you know, I understand everybody didn't watch Dave Chappelle. Very, very, very funny show. And. Um, you know, the he. Even though it's a joke, even though it's something that we all laugh at, it's something that's apparently serious. You know, me and myself, I'm no better than anyone. It just so happened that drugs just wasn't my, you know, I, I've never tried a drug, never. Marijuana, maybe 25 years ago was the last time that I even smoked anything. It just wasn't my thing. I've never popped a pill. I've never... Obviously, crack, uh, cocaine, none of it. I've never tried it. Social drinker, you know. But again, I'm no better than anyone else. You know, I have other uh, uh, issues that I deal with. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It just so happens to where drugs, again, just, I don't know. 
I was just never interested in them. All my friends smoked weed coming up, and they pretty much still do for the most part. But you know, we grown now, so nobody's really hanging out like that. I'm sorry. Had to get my water in. You know what I mean? But um, you know, it it was a situation where this guy, real good dude, man, real good dude, give you the shirt off his back. And when I say he would literally give you, like literally, he'll give you the shirt off his back. Everybody knew him. Everybody respected him. You know, he was known out there in the streets. Um, he just had one issue, and his issue, he liked to get high. He just had to get high. And he was one of those type, he was one of those guys that he didn't really have a, he had a criminal record, but everything was minor. Like he had never been to prison before. He had never had a felony before. So he would catch like possession of paraphernalia or, or possession of, you know, it'd be a small amount of drugs to where it would just be a misdemeanor. Or if it was a felony, they would just, you know, knock it down to a misdemeanor. He would end up doing time in the county jail come back out and it's crazy because this person that i'm speaking of we just gonna call him ed we just gonna call him ed so ed he like i don't know i guess he just had great genes because he would go to jail and within 30 days 45 days man the dude would just get so big pause he was already cut up, but from where, you know, when he was out in the streets, he's running the streets. He's not really eating, not sleeping. Um, he's getting high, so he would always, you know, kind of shrink. He would lose his weight. But about 30 days, 45 days after being locked up, that dude was an animal. Plus, that's all he did was push-ups, 12, 1,500 push-ups a day. So the dude was very, very well put together. You know, he, he was well put together, you know. And so, I guess he said, well, actually, I don't guess he told me. He got into a situation in which he came across some money. The thing about money is you have to know how to handle it. Because when you come across money and, and you're typically not, you know, used to having money, it, it can become a problem as far as spending because you're just spending like crazy because it just kind of fell in his lap. So he's just spending like crazy because he didn't really have to earn it. He didn't have to do much for it. It, I think it was a lawsuit or something like that. So he had a lot of money. So being that he had a lot of money, he liked to party. And when I say he liked to party, obviously I already stated he liked to get high, but he liked to have you know, a couple girls with him, so he's gonna go get him a room, they're renting out a room for weeks at a time, um, you know, he has his ladies with him, he's buying all the food, all the drinks, all the drugs, you know, just supporting everybody's habit, but you can imagine that that's only gonna last for so long, so they went on a binge, and he was telling me that for about six months straight, this was every day, this was every day. He's spending, you know, a minimum of a thousand. He said and that was on a low end, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a day, every day for six months straight. And he has different women that he's partying with. Now, he never stated exactly how much money he came across, but had to have been a pretty significant amount to be able to sustain that lifestyle for six months straight. The amount of money that he said that he was spending. This dude was also known to be a pimp, a real life pimp. The women loved him. You could tell the women loved him in the county jail. The, the female C, uh, correction officers, they loved him. So he had charisma, you know, and, and everybody loved Ed. So, <laughs> At some point, you know, the money runs out. Think about it. You're spending all this money every day, but you're not bringing anything in. And you're a pimp, but you don't really have time for that because you got the money and you're able to just 
do what you want to do all day long. Just lay up, just lay back. The money runs out. Once the money runs out, he's already become accustomed to that lifestyle. That lifestyle that he developed and was able to live and sustain for six months. Never had to worry about money. He didn't have any kids. He doesn't have any kids. I said he didn't as though he's no longer with us. He's still with us. But he doesn't have any kids. No real responsibilities. At this time, he was maybe early 30s. 32, something like that. So, hey, he's living it up. He's partying like a rock star. As I mentioned, eventually the money runs out. Now you can't stay in the hotels like that. Hotels want their money. They don't care how much you spend with them. The dope man, oh, you don't got no more money? Holler at me when you got some money. The dope man don't care how much money you spent. The ladies... You can't support our habit. We're gone. So he finds himself just, you know, by himself, pretty much. And oftentimes that's how it goes. When you're winning, everybody wants to be with you. But when you're losing, <laughs> blowing in the wind. Such is life. Being that he had become accustomed to that lifestyle that he had lived for six months, he's craving that. He's craving that lifestyle, being able to just get high whenever he wants, as much as he wants. Problem is, the money's just not coming in like that. Yeah, he was a pimp, a real life pimp. But it's not like he had, a, you know, <laughs> hella fast selections. You know, he couple selections but wasn't bringing in um significant amounts of cash he decides you know what quickest way for me to get some money i'm gonna go commit a robbery it's the quickest way to make some money i'm gonna go hit me a lick plans it out goes in Hits a lick. It's nothing significant. Three, four hundred dollars. So you risk. You risk your entire life, essentially. Or a great uh, a part of your life. For a few hundred bucks. But you have to feed the high. You have to feed the addiction. You have to feed that addiction. three or four hundred bucks buying crack which was his uh, drug of course of choice rather doesn't last long doesn't last long at all a few hours a couple hours maybe if you buy yourself maybe if it's something decent maybe if it hasn't been stepped on too many times when i say stepped on meaning that you know people are actually putting things in the drugs to make it stretch so you may buy a certain amount, which is a small amount, and, and you add something to it, like that fentanyl that they're going crazy over. You better not get caught with no fentanyl. And feds are stepping in like crazy. So you put that in the drug to stretch it. So that's what I mean when I say stepped on. So you never know what you're taking. That's one of the, the real dangers. You have no clue what you're smoking. If you smoke, you have no clue. You're shooting up, whatever. You have no clue what you're putting in your body. But the, the, the craving to get high is so great, most don't care. They take a chance. Willing to risk their life for a measly high. A few hours go past. The 300 bucks that he had. 
It's gone. So what now? Go commit another robbery. To get more money. After all, that was so easy. I got three, four hundred bucks just like that. You go and commit you another robbery. Four or five hundred bucks. A couple of days later. Because, you know, he's hitting other licks in between other than just the robberies. A couple of days later, he robs another place. And then another place. Then another place. Now you look up, it's eight, nine different places that have been robbed. He's not getting anything significant every time he's robbing someplace. A few hundred dollars, maybe eight, nine hundred dollars. But he's taking a chance with his life every single time. Rather it be him being killed. Or him going to prison. You catch a robbery case in Kentucky, 85%. Meaning that you're going to do 85% of your time. Without a criminal record, it's 10 years per robbery, minimum. This guy had become a serial robber at this point. Because all these robberies that he was committing, they were like back to back to back. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to take a month and then you know, go do it again, or I'm going to take two months and oh, these were all back-to-back -back robberies. The serial robber at that point. One particular night, they rob a, uh, he decides to rob a liquor store. He goes in, robs a liquor store, he has a nice lick. I think he comes up on about $1,500, $1,800. And he did it so easily. It was so easy to him. It was so easy that he decided to come back a few days later. Came back in, robbed him again. Got a nice amount. I don't think it was the fifteen, eighteen hundred that he got the first time, but it was enough to uh, do what he needed to do as far as going to get high. Had the guts and the, and and <laughs> to go in and rob the same exact store. A couple weeks later, I guess he's feeling it. I guess he can't come up on any money anywhere else. Guess what store pops up in his mind? That same liquor store that he had previously robbed twice already. This time he has someone with him. They go in to rob the place. There was a lady. There was a lady um, in the liquor store that night. So when one of the guys that, well, it was only one guy with him, he went in, he had hit the cash register. He hit the cash register. The Ed had the gun. Ed has the gun on the lady while the other guy is at the cash register. The problem is Ed had been up for three or four days straight. Hadn't had any sleep. Three or four days straight he had been up. For some odd reason, Ed lays the gun on the counter. I think Ed was taking like cigarettes, things that you're not even supposed to. You shouldn't even be robbing anybody, period. That's the first thing. But if you just must rob somebody, you get the money and you go. Ed decides he wants to take all the cigarettes because he's probably thinking to himself, man, I can sell these. And cigarettes do sell very easily on the streets. High commodity. So I'm told. I know at least back then they were. So Ed puts the gun on the counter. And he takes his eyes evidently off the woman. Maybe he underestimated her. I don't know what Ed was thinking. 
The woman seen an opportunity to grab the gun. So she's going for the gun. Ed sees her, so he grabs her. No disrespect, it was a nice-ass woman. She wasn't, you know, she probably was maybe about, I'm going to say maybe about 5'8". She was weighing in, i say a good, solid, solid 220. The reason I know is because they showed the, uh, they showed it on the news. It was being recorded. She's tussling with him. Now remember, he's a nice ass dude when he's locked up, when he's not getting high, when he's rested, when he's able to get in there and, and, and you know, work out. He's a nice ass dude, but on the streets, he loses a whole lot of weight. Like I said, he goes days without sleeping. He had already been high, obviously. I don't know if he was high during that particular encounter. But he wasn't his normal self. So she was able to kind of, you know, throw him around, toss him around a little bit. So they're tussling. Lo and behold, guess who grabs the gun? Now the rabbit got the gun. The other dude that was at the register, he runs. She shoots him. Pow! When she shoots him, I think she hit him in the shoulder, though. He gets away. He gets out of the store. Ed's just standing there. He has his hands up. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I... I'm, I'm. She don't want to hear any of that. He's trying to talk her out of calling the police. It's too late for this. The third time you didn't hit my store. You got away with it one time. Then you came back and did it again. And then you're going to try the same store for a third time? So he's trying to explain to her. She's not trying to hear any of that. None of it. He calls the police. Police comes. Apprehends the uh, suspect, the subject. How they talk on cops. Yeah, the uh, subject's been apprehended. He goes to jail. Now he's facing a lot of robberies. Nobody ever thought that he would make it out ever again. I mean, this was at least 12 to 15 robberies. All within a, a short span of time. watching the news one day I look up and I see Ed on the news he's in the county jail and the news is there interviewing him Ed goes on national television not national but you know local uh, uh, television if you will and admits to every last robbery yeah I did it I just want to tell the kids to stay in school, stay off drugs. You know, you're going to find yourself in a position like this. You know, it was kind of like a, a, a public service announcement to the kids. Ed's going back and forth to court. There's no possible way that he can beat these charges. You're at the mercy of the court because for one, they already knew you did it. For two, you didn't just admit it on local news, even though they knew anyway. Ed ends up getting 25 year sentence at 85%. That was the best he was going to get. And I think that he came out pretty decent considering, considering the situation. 12, 15 robberies, violent robberies with guns. Just 25 years at 85%, which means he has to serve 85% of his time or 20 years, whichever one comes first. He'll end up doing 20 years straight He'll make it out again if he's able to make it through. You know, he's in there. He's healthy. He's working out, doing his pull-ups, push-ups. He's, you know, pretty healthy. So barring anything happening to him in there, he'll it'll be home, I would say, probably another 12 years, 11, 12 years. He'll make it home. And hopefully Ed has learned his lesson. Um, 
He'll be in his early, early 50s. He's a workout uh, warrior. So, you know, he's going to maintain his health. He's very serious about his health. It's just unfortunate that Ed had to go through this. It's so unfortunate that Ed had to endure the lifestyle that he chose. 20 straight years for a person that never even had a felony. All because you wanted to get high. So he's in there and he's taking his classes. He's he's doing all the things that, you know, he should be doing. But the things that he could have been doing out here on the streets. Ed's going to do 20 years straight. He was trying to tell me about a program that's going on now and where they're letting people out early. And that's, and you know, and I don't want to rain on this parade, but that's not going to apply to you, Ed. Violent robberies. They're not letting people that uh, are accused or have been convicted, rather, of violent robberies out of prison early. They're just not doing it. People that they do let out early, when they do it, is nonviolent. You know, older people, people that that are dealing with sicknesses, disease, and things of that nature. So Ed's gonna have to do this twenty years. Stay in school. Get you a trade. Get you a job. Get you two jobs. Do something other than turn to crime. Because when you turn to crime and you go to that penitentiary, it gets real, real dark, real, real lonesome, violent. It's real. It's real. It is a good dude. Man. He was just consumed his drug habits, man. Just had him, just had him out there. Real Kids TV. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to uh, definitely comment, share, subscribe to the Chiz Channel. Uh, be sure to hit that post notification anytime I bring you this action, this heat. You're amongst the first to receive it. Damn, it. Real Kids TV.